Today we're going to talk about the electrocardiograph, or what is also called is the 12 lead system. And in order to um, understand how does it work, we have to know that this system gives us anatomically accurate results. So that means that each one of those leads is positioned in a place to monitor the heart or monitor a special part of the heart so that when something goes wrong with that lead we know that a problem is situated in that specific area or region. Um, we'll see now how it works. So here, and this uh, supposed to be man, uh, this is the right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Now, how are the leads positions? How are the 12 lead system, how, how is the 12 lead system uh, put on the patient? Well, first of all, we have three leads that we call augmented voltage leads. Those ones are three leads. They are put as follows. We have one which is called AVR. AV stands for augmented voltage. AVR on the right arm. AVL on the left arm and the third one is called AVF F for foot because and is put on the left foot on the right foot we have also a lead which is the fourth one but we don't count it because this one is the ground so it doesn't transmit electrical information about the heart. So those are the first three leads that we have. And then the heart is situated right here. We'll make this a bit wider. Here would be the sternal line, and here would be the mid clavicular line, so the line that passes through uh, the middle of the clavicle, and then here we have the mid axillary line mid-axillary line, the line that passes through the middle of the axilla. Those three lines would help us know how to put the next six leads. So we have six leads numbered from V1 to V6 and those ones are called unipolar leads. Unipolar leads. So those ones have just one pole and we will see uh, how that works in a moment. So, the first one, V1, is put to the right of the sternum at the fourth intercoastal space. So this is where V1 is put. Fourth intercoastal space. V2 is put exactly in the same area, but on the left side. This is where V2 is put. And then we have V4. V4 is put in the fifth intercoastal space on the 
midclavicular line. So we have here V4 in the fifth intercostal space. And V6 is put exactly in the same area but on the mid axillary line. On the mid axillary line. And then we have V3, which is situated between V2 and V4. And finally, V5, which is situated between V4 and V6. So as we can see, those leads, those six leads, the unipolar leads, they are situated on a horizontal axis. So they monitor the, the activity of the heart horizontally, while those leads, the augmented voltage leads, they uh, monitor the activity of the heart on a frontal plane. So this sums up to nine leads. Where are the other three? Well, the other three leads are not quite real leads. They are virtual leads and they result from the summation of the augmented voltage leads that we have. By the way, aug augmented voltage means that the voltage of the leads is increased by the device that measures the, electro uh, the electrocardiac activity. So this is why it's called augmented, because it's not supplying itself with uh, voltage, but the voltage is being increased by the device itself. So where are the other three leads? The other three leads form something called Eindhoven's triangle. And this triangle looks like that. So this triangle here is Eindhoven's triangle. And the other three leads are as follows. The one between AVR and AVL is called lead 1. Between AVR and AVF is called lead 2. And AVL and AVF is called lead 3. So three leads here, Eindhoven's triangle, three leads, and those ones are called bipolar leads. Now you see the difference. Bipolar because each one of them has two poles, while for the um, V1 to V6 leads, we have they're called unipolar leads because each one of them has only one pole. So now, 3 plus 6, 9 plus 3, 12. Now we completed the 12 lead system. As you can see here, well, we mentioned earlier that those leads will give us anatomically accurate uh, readings of the heart. We can see that each single one of those leads will um, look at the heart from a different position. Lead 1 will look superiorly. AVL will look from this angle, lead to AVF, lead 3, sorry, AVF, lead 2, and then we have AVR. For example, we have lateral leads, so that if there is an infarction or there is something abnormal in those leads, we realize that the problem that is going on in the heart is lateral. Those are V5, V6, they are lateral. AVL and lead 1. Lead 1 can also target the lateral side. So those are lateral leads. Inferior leads, for example, those ones that target the heart from an inferior point of view. Lead 2, AVF, lead 3. We have anterior leads, anterior leads, those ones on the horizontal plane, V1 to V4. 
those ones right there, they are anterior. We have those who monitor the right side. We have AVR, we have also V1 and V2. And maybe lead one. So you see that this system would um, monitor the electric activity of the heart sufficient uh, or efficiently enough to um, actually give results that could uh, narrow the suggestions if there is a problem in the activity of the heart. Uh, so that was our lesson for today. Next time we're going to talk about the cardiac axis. So now we know the leads and through those leads we uh, could determine where does the summation of all the vectors of electricity that happen in the heart, which is called the cardiac axis, uh, directed. And based on that, we can actually determine um, other pathological diseases as well. So how to uh, determine the cardiac axis, this is what we're going to do next time. Until then, I thank you for watching and see you.